Let's get to our exclusive report now on Budo's grim warning of what might happen to her and why. Her fears of an assassination have now come true. And only now can I reveal to you what I know. This is a story she wanted me to tell the world on her behalf if she were killed. This past October, Budo sent an email to her longtime friend in Washington, her U.S. spokesman, Mark Siegel. Addressing the danger she faced in her homeland, Budo wrote these words, and let me quote them precisely. Nothing will, God willing, happen. Just wanted you to know, if it does, in addition to the names in my letter to Musharraf of October 16th, I would hold Musharraf responsible. I have been made to feel insecure by his minions, and there is no way what is happening in terms of stopping me from taking private cars or using tinted windows or giving jammers or four police mobiles to cover all sides could happen without him. At Budo's request, Mark Siegel forwarded that email to me the day he received it back on October 26th, but he told me I could not report on it unless Budo was killed. And Mark, thanks very much uh, for coming in. I know you and Benazir Buddha were close for 25 years. You had a long-standing relationship with her. My deepest condolences to you on the death of your friend. But give us the context uh, of this email that you received from her. This was two months ago. Um, well, uh, uh, Benazir was, uh, was very concerned by the lack of security that she had on, uh, on her arrival in Karachi on October 18th. Uh, the circumstances around the assassination attempt on the, ni the night of 18th, uh, the morning of the 19th, was very, very suspicious. Uh, there was no investigation, contrary to anything the ambassador might, might later say, there was no investigation uh, of that uh, horrendous killing which killed 179 people. Um, the, uh, there, she had asked that Scotland Yard and the FBI be, be brought in for uh, forensic uh, help uh, for the investigation. The government of General Musharraf absolutely refused to have Scotland Yard or the FBI brought in. Um, as we prepared for the campaign, um, um, former Prime Minister Budo was very concerned that she was not getting the security that she had asked for and that her husband had asked for. It was very, very specific um, that they had asked for uh, jammers to, uh, to, to, um, to set off IEDs. Uh, that, that was denied to be allowed in by the government of General Musharraf. She had asked for special vehicles. That was den uh, denied to her. Uh, she had asked for special tinted cars. She had asked for uh, four police vehicles to surround her at all times. She basically asked for all that was required for, for someone of the standing of a former prime minister. All of that was denied to her. She sent me the well, email. Let me interrupt. Life. I don't know, Mark, if you saw that picture that was taken of her only moments before she was killed. She was standing up in, a, in, in, the, uh, in this van going through the, uh, the sunroof, which uh, I have to tell you, given uh, what happened to her upon her return to Karachi after eight years in exile and the more than 100 people, as you point out, were killed then. And we're showing our viewers that, that picture right now. Some would argue that was pretty reckless on her part to be going up and, and speaking like that through uh, unprotect, unprotected in a van sunroof. Benazir Bhutto believed in democracy and she believed in speaking to the people. It's not reckless to go out and touch the people. Um, don't blame the victim for the crime. The person that was supposed to be protecting Benazir Bhutto and the other candidates was the government of, of Pakistan, was the government of General Pervez Musharraf. Don't blame the victim. Right, blame no, them. We're not blaming the victim.